Hi guys, Jordan from PMP. Just gonna do a hand of a video on your um, Crafter Millard Motorsport motorhome. Um, so we're starting with the bonnet, a bit noisy next to the road, but uh, brake fluid up here attached to the servo at the back. Engine coolant just here at the front. Engine oil goes in here, and then you can check your engine oil from the dipstick over here. If you want to jump start the van, the engine battery is inside the cab, but you have got this positive terminal here and a negative over here um, although you can really sort of negative it from from anywhere anywhere that's got a good uh, sort of positive uh, 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 good earth on it um, power steering fluid here at the front and then your washer fluid sits here under this blue reservoir um, all right so that's it for under the bonnet obviously you got diesel to fill up from here and the only reason that's not got an actual key lock on it is because you actually have to have the door open and, lo and unlocked to in, in order to actually open it up so if i close the door now you can't open that up so you need to have the door open anyway to get it open you've got a big inverter here under this seat i just need to open it with two hands so that's where that is and if you want to use these two um plug sockets just here you need to have this inverter on like this Obviously that will drain out your battery a little bit if you are using it a lot. Um, so for the most part, leave it off um, and then you make sure you don't get any drain. Um, but that's how you need to use those sockets there. And they've written on your hab sheet anyway, but um, just show you there. On the other side in the cab, got, if I just point out a few things to you actually in the cab itself. So your hazard warning lights are in the middle lock and unlock the cab from inside heated seats are on these two individual buttons here you've got a six speed manual gearbox so reverse lift up over and down to the left and then obviously first all the way through to sixth you know, in the normal way make sure that you don't have this camera on at all times otherwise you'll end up draining your battery out as well so just switch that off when you're not using it um, you've got the heater sort of controls there so that's putting where uh, telling it where to put the air and the temperature paper holder little clip there uh what else we got indicators and washers are on this left hand stalk here because you haven't really got a right hand stalk cruise control here at the bottom that is aftermarket um so we haven't tested that obviously um but you know it should work just as it should um Key obviously goes in there. Lights, so you've got dip beam, then main beam, and then you've got your actual uh, windows here uh, as well. So, um, okay, I won't open this cupboard up because to be honest, there's nothing under there. It's, bit, it's just storage underneath this settee just here, um, but you know, plenty of it. This one here, this is your mains water, all right? So if you're on a campsite or at home and you had access to a mains water, uh, sort of a hose point, if you like, then you can run the system off of that. So you won't get any pump or anything like that. It'll basically work just like a household. Um, so if you have access to doing that, they're great. You can go here and you don't need to use your pump. Or if you look underneath here, we've got this here, which has fresh water. All right, so it's closed at the moment and there's nothing coming out of it. So that means it's not leaking. Um, but if you want to use it like a normal sort of motorhome uh, water tank system, you need to open it up when it's empty, pop your hose point on there and fill it up from the bottom up. And then once you've finished filling, turn it to this, this way again so it stops going. Um, but at the moment it's got about half a tank's worth of water. So there's plenty in there at the minute. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. So you've got two ways of using the water. And then just so you know, the red tank over there is your um, gas tank. I'll show you how to turn that on from inside. I have pressure tested it from the regulator up there um, and there's no leaks anywhere and it's working exactly how it should. This vent here, which is all color coded, which is really nice, uh, is your whale water heater vent. These two vents here, again, color coded, but that's your Dometic fridge vent. So if you have it lit on gas, you'd be able to feel hot air coming out through this top vent here. Um, so that's one way of double checking that it's definitely lit. Hookup point, so that gives you access to using your plug sockets and 
things like that anything on mains inside the van so that's your fridge um the water heater as well is on mains wastewater drain is here so you just turn the tap there and that'll drain out all your wastewater external hot and cold water point and there is a bit for that uh in here so that's this you plug it in there and then turn it left or right whichever way you you know if you want it hot or cold uh in this locker back here put your cassette toilet so you've got a fresh water flush on here so that means you don't have to fill up any separate pink fluid or anything like that although if you do want to keep the bowl lubricated you can buy a spray bottle uh, of the pink lift up and pull out as i'm sure you're aware already uh from your other motor home but i've lubricated all of this as part of the hab check um so that's all good it's working exactly how it should pop that back away like that and i'll show you how to flush that inside so if i close this up obviously you have to do this left hand door first and because of the uh, carpeting on the inside of the door you do need to slam it quite hard to be fair um you're not doing it any harm but you know that's that's it shut properly now um just because of the carpeting on the inside external barbecue point so if you want to plug into your barbecue from outside you can do so here you do need to give them a little tap like that as well just to close them up properly otherwise they'll flap around um external tv and 240 volt socket i don't know yeah i think it's sometimes a bit over the top really having things like that but it gives you access to using it if you like and then just down here is your auto gas uh filling point so if you're at a camp a um uh fuel station that has these lpg filling points then you can go do that from there um although if i show you just quickly just before i forget on this little gauge down here which is how you actually turn the gas on so i've got it on at the moment because i've got green light and that tells us it's literally nearly full the gas tank so you've got a long time until that that will run out um but to turn it off just click it and that stops the gas coming through click it again and that's it that's back on um so that yeah that's how you turn your gas on and off really really easy but also it tells you the level of, of gas so you've got nearly a full tank and i think they're about 10 kilos those bottles down there those submersible one um those uh, underslung tanks so yeah a long time till you need to refill that uh, okay so if we start from over here so top cupboard up here loads of storage up there just thought i'd open that so you could see um nice strong new uh hinges as well which is really nice stays because uh you know sometimes they do when the older ones do get a bit worn out um i've left this, this one open here so i can show you in here so you've got your solar controller so it tells you up there your battery is 100 percent full and so basically the solar the solar panel is not doing a lot right now because it doesn't need to um but the two wires on the left hand side are coming straight from your solar panel and the two wires in the middle are going down to your leisure battery um so yeah that's just basically that's your solar controller there that's that's you know doing its own job doing as it should okay so the control panel itself i'll just quickly run you through that so this bottom right hand button it's all touch screen as well by the way bottom right hand button is the main lights on and off switch so if i turn that off none of the lights inside the van will work switch it on then i can go around um to a few different places around the van um so one of those two switches does all the lights in the middle and the other one actually does a light just above the step and the two awning lights as well which is really nice so uh, that's how that works um the other lights around the van that are dot dotted around have all got their own switches on them um so you know like this one's got these under here for that um in the bathroom as well there's a couple of switches just here nice bright lights and you've got like a little extractor as well up there all right so that's for in the shower room so yeah they've really thought this thought this through really nicely uh you know very well thought out um okay so uh yeah okay sorry um next thing we've got the water pump so that is a normal sort of inline pump so that gets up the pressure um no leaks at the moment at all because i know that you know if, if i had that button on like it is now and you could hear it going uh, and not stopping when you've not got this the tap open that means it's leaking usually um or the pressure switch is slightly off but 
you know, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever and uh, it's working exactly how it should. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you come into the van to wanna get hot water and things like that, is go to the, go to here and turn the main on switch there, 12 volt and your pump. And then you wanna to come to the, sap, the tap here and just pull the water through on the hot side. Pump's kicked in now. And you see a little bit of air come through there, not very much, but a little bit. And then just go to the cold as well. The reason it's not draining out very well is because I've not got the waste open. Um, it will drain out, but it will drain out much quicker if you leave the waste open, but you know, it's just a, one of those things. Wait for the pump to go off and that's it. That's how you know that your water tank is definitely full of water and the um, water heater is full of water as well. So then you can go ahead and use that. Um, so you shouldn't really use the water heater at all unless you've done that and made sure that there's definitely water in the system. Um, so if I now show you how to use the water heater, it's just this little sort of uh, controller here. If I want to use it on gas, I can click down here and it'll just go through and it'll just start, you know, to sort of work. It'll light up and it'll start to heat the water up via the gas. Or I can go to here and use it on electric. So that's when your hookup's plugged in. And I've written on the hab sheet how many amps each one of those pulls. Um, but yeah, so that's how that works. Gas on the left, electric on the right. You can go up or down for that one. Um, yeah, I've had that all working and it works totally as it should. Again, uh, even easier to be honest, it's this side of things, uh, the, the cooker. Um, so you've got a three burner hob on the top. Ignition is here and that is everything, all right? So that's the grill, oven and the three burners, all of this one ignition. Um, all the thermocouples work as they should. So a thermocouple um, basically means that when the gas is lit, the thermocouple realizes that there's burning gas coming through and it allows the gas to come through. If somehow the flame got blown out, the thermocouple would do its job and stop the gas coming through so you can't fill the van up with loads of random gas um, so yeah and they all work as they should storage under there and you see the little red bit at the bottom of these this cupboard here and the, and the cupboard next door that's the propex heater um which i'll show you in a second but let's uh under here so these are all your gas manifolds or your gas taps so if you thought you had an individual issue, then you can go to here and isolate that individual appliance uh, as and when you please. You don't need to do that unless you think you've got a problem, like not if you're gonna park up for a week or something like that, you don't need to do that um, because I've pressure tested it, like I said, and there's no leaks. So just go there. If you think there's a problem with any of the appliances or you think there's a gas leak somewhere, then you can go here, but otherwise you don't need to. Um, so that's that. The fridge super easy um, main on and off switch here and you get the lights coming on it'll automatically go through and choose which uh, sort of uh, energy if you like to use so at the moment it's chosen to tw uh, 12 volt which isn't working because the engine is not running so if I had a hookup plugged in I could click there and it would work on hookup but that'll start flashing in a second as well because there's no hookup plugged in there you go but the only way I can use it at the moment is the gas because I've got the gas on, the engine's not running and the hookup's not plugged in. So if I click gas, that will light up. There you go. So you heard the igniter there and then you heard the igniter go out as well. So that means it's lit up and the igniter's realized that there's definitely a flame there. Um, so if you left that two or three hours or so, that would get really, really cold. Um, but I know, you got, you know you, you're know you moving on from another motorhome, but if you leave it overnight, on gas or electric when you come back to it in the morning you'll have plenty of charge uh, uh, plenty of uh, temperature there so if i turn that off now so yeah so the the, the, the general idea with these fridges is that you've got the mains gas or 12 volt the mains and the gas will get the thing cold uh, on its own after a couple of hours the 12 volt won't get it cold on its own but it will hold the temperature for whilst you're driving somewhere. So get it cold first on either of these two and then switch over to the 12 volt just for when you're driving. Um, okay, so that's the fridge. Uh, okay, so the Propex heater, so that's your actual heating. This is gas only, all right? Temperature dial at the bottom, 
So it really is as easy as that. You can just choose a temperature like that. Just fan or heating, all right? So you, it's basically fan only to give you a little bit of cool air pumping around or heating, all right? And that's on gas, like I said. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy. I mean, I've heard it, I can hear it starting up already. And once it's lit, you get a little green light come on there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna turn that off because I don't need it on, it's really hot. Um, but yeah, that's how that works, really, really easy. The other two things, I should have done this earlier, it's my bad, but... So the other things here, so you've got the one underneath here in the middle is your battery level sensor, and you've got caravan battery, 14 volts, engine battery, 13 volts, so they're both brilliant charges, and at the bottom, fresh water level, 60%. Oh, that's it, fresh water level. So there's no waste water level, but if you make sure that you empty the waste out when you fill the fresh up, you'll know, because they're the same size tank, you'll know that when the fresh is going to nearly empty, the waste is nearly full. So you can do it that way, um, whatever suits you really. So if I go through and turn these bits off now then, push and hold on the on that one there to, to get that to go off. Um, in fact, actually, I'll just turn it on so I can show you the toilet as well. So push and hold, just so you can see it turning on. 12 volt, lights, pump put them all on let me get your new bits dirty but toilet itself flush button at the back so that pumps your water through around there like that and that's via the actual pump itself like i said um fresh water flush and then open that up if you find that you can't take the cassette out from outside one day in the, in the rear locker then you'll find that you've left the flap open rather than closed so you need to come back in here and close the flap up um, and once you've done that, you'll find that it comes out easy. Um, the sink and the shower in here are exactly the same as all the, as the other sink there, so I don't really need to show you that. Um, but I have had them working, and they do pull the, the right water through, um, as they should. Uh, but yeah, so that's the bathroom. Um, there is a little isolator. If I just, just make sure I've definitely covered everything I can before I show you this. Um, so if I switch this off now, which you should do before you start driving. Um, oh, you've got your microwave here as well, but that'll only work when your hookup's plugged in. I have had this working as well. I've made it, you know, I've made sure it does come on. Uh, 240 volt socket and a USB, two USB points in there as well. And also your, um, You've got a couple of bits in here. So you've got your um, fuses. So this is your little fuse board in here, little CBE unit. And next to that is your trip switches, all right? So if you find that you plug a, a dodgy plug into one of the sockets in the van, you'll find that you trip in that next little uh, white unit in this one here. All right, so have a look in there and make sure that they're, they're all up if, if you can't get zone to work. Um, yeah, that's about it. So turn these off now. And then hold like that. So that's the whole control panel. Everything 12 volt then is off. So if I just show you last thing, where your um, gas tank is underneath. Oops, I have to move up a little bit. So it's actually really simple. So you've got this little winding cap just here. If I actually just take that, I'll just take that off one sec. Just so you can see. So underneath that, you've got, if we just get underneath, uh, where are we? Uh, I can't really see, hold on. Oh no, maybe not, I'm wrong. So basically because you've got the um, the little button inside the inside the van itself, like I showed you to turn it on and off, you don't actually have a an isolating winder like you would have in a normal bottle. Um, that's what I was gonna try and show you, but you haven't got one because of that button inside. So yeah, that button inside is literally the main on and off switch, totally on and off. 
Um, but if you ever needed to get to the actual tank itself, it's just underneath that little le that little plate, uh, which I just unscrewed for you. So I'll pop that back on now, uh, but that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.